Hey YouTube, Scarpio here. We're finally here. We're finally, we're finally here. If this is the first video that you're watching, unfortunately, you're at the very end of the series. I do highly recommend going all the way to the beginning and watching it all because it's great content. Now, before we get started, I've got a quick announcement. I will start streaming on Twitch next week. I still have a lot of stuff to get back from the hacker, so I will be doing lots of PVM to make my money back. So follow me on Twitch, come ask me your PVM questions on stream, watch me completely fail at new bosses, it'll be fun. I've got the link down below, make sure you follow and turn on notifications because at the moment I'm not using a schedule, but if you want to get a heads up on when I will be streaming, I have a Discord server. I've also got the link for that down below. Uh, that way you can stay updated on upcoming streams and videos coming out. Alright, now back to the video. So after learning about the basics of PVM, we have to apply it. I know it's a lot to put together and tough trying to remember everything from 20 different videos, but what I'm gonna do is show you step by step how I handle a hypothetical new boss and apply everything that I've taught you so far. The boss I've chosen is Hellweir, which most of you already know I fought many times, but let's pretend that I haven't. I chose this boss for multiple reasons. I feel like it's a decent step up from the bosses in the God Wars 1 dungeon, or King Black Dragon, or Giant Mole. It also has a decent amount of mechanics to learn, but not too much to explain in comparison to Nex, Rax, or Telos. The first thing that I do with a new boss is look them up on the RuneScape wiki. It gives a ton of information here about the boss. He's level 1000, has 200,000 life points, is aggressive, but not poisonous. He only attacks with melee, and his auto attack happens every 4 ticks or 2.4 seconds. A very important piece of info you should check with every boss is down here. Sometimes bosses have weaknesses, but unfortunately Hellward doesn't have one. But he is also not immune to poison, reflect, and drain, but is immune to stun. So for this boss you won't be needing my video on stuns, but since he can be poisoned, you'll want weapon poison in your inventory. If you can afford Cinderbane gloves, use them, but I will not be using them since not everyone has them. Not everyone has Ancient Curses unlocked either, so I'll be sticking to the regular prayers, which also takes away the tier 95 drain slash boosting prayers. But if you have these unlocked, I would use them. He only attacks with melee, so I'll pray protect from melee the entire time, which is nice not needing to prayer switch. I will then learn about the boss mechanics that I need to tackle. Hellweir has four different specials that he will use in order. The first is the Mushroom Clouds. These deal fast AoE typeless damage that slows your run to a walk. And if you're in the Mushroom Cloud for more than four seconds, you will be bound for three seconds. So that seems simple enough, just get out of the Mushroom Cloud as soon as possible. You can surge your bladed dive out of the Mushroom Cloud, but I won't for a reason that you'll find out later. The second special to worry about is the Cleave. This deals up to 3,000 melee damage. You have two choices here, really. Either step out of melee distance to avoid the hit completely, or switch to a shield and resonance the hit for lots of health. I'll be using the resonance method to try and save on food. The third special is the Frenzy special. Hellweer will run around and deal up to 1,800 melee damage every two ticks five times. This can also be avoided by stepping out of melee distance. Or you can pray melee and use devotion, which will negate all the damage. Or cut a lot of the damage down by using debilitate and reflect, along with protect melee. I'll be using these methods rather than stepping out of melee distance. The last special is the wolves. Hellweir summons a couple of wolves to help him. The easiest way to tackle this is by using a two-handed weapon and using some AoE abilities like cleave, hurricane, and quake. These specials trigger in exactly this order, with three auto attacks in between each of them. This makes it very easy to predict and practice ahead of time. Another mechanic to worry about are the bleeds that Hellweir applies when he does his cleave and frenzy specials, but these can be negated with freedom. The last mechanic that is very important and is definitely overlooked on the wiki because it's only a note down here is when you were out of melee distance with Hellweir, he will skip auto attacks and go straight to the next special. This is the reason I won't be surging out of the mushroom cloud. This really changes how we want to fight him. 
With Hellweir only using melee, the best method, you would think, is mage. But then you have to worry about staying in melee distance. Or I can just run melee, which will keep me in melee distance. I will take a little more damage than if I ran Mage, but I'll be bringing a Beast of Burden with food and Resonance the Cleave, so it should balance out. Since I know I'm using melee, I can start to figure out what gear I want to bring to the fight. I'm going to be using Bandos armor, since it is power armor for more damage. I'll wear a Ceridoman's Whisper for the necklace slot. A Fire Cape will be great for the cape slot. I'll be using three different rings, the Asylum Surgeon's Ring, the Ring of Vigor, and a Luck Ring. For the Aura, I'll be using the Supreme Brawler Aura until I can handle the boss well for Berserker. And lastly, the Pocket Slot, which for new bosses, I recommend a Sign of Life until you get better, and then use a Scrimshaw. For weapons, I'll be using the Necronium Battle Axes, both dual wield and two hand. I can make this easier by only bringing the two-handed weapon, but I do think that weapon switching and shield switching is something to start learning now to make your life easier on learning higher level PVM. I will also be using the Necronium Kite Shield. In my inventory, I'll be using a Super Melee Potion, a couple of Prayer Flasks, a Weapon Poison Plus Plus Flask, and an Adrenaline Potion Flask. The last does require level 84 Prayer, but the rest are tradable. I do highly recommend getting your Herbler level high enough for Adrenaline Potions. I'll carry a few Ceridome and Brew Flasks, and then fill the rest of the inventory with Sharks. My Beast of Burden will be a War Tortoise filled with Sharks. Hopefully, I won't need all the food, but when starting a new boss, it doesn't hurt to bring extra. For Relic Powers, I'll be using the Berserker's Fury and Death Ward. The next thing you'll want to do if you haven't done already, is set up your Action Bar properly. I'm going to set up two similar action bars, one for two-handed and one for dual wield. They both have two ultimates, three thresholds, and six basics. I've keybound the ultimates and thresholds and turned off the auto-triggering for those since I'll queue them manually. I also have turned on the auto-switching for the action bars, that way I'm not messing around with it in the middle of the fight. As for my utility bar and the extra spacing on my revolution bar, I'll need keybinds for the melee prayer, all my weapons and shield, freedom, resonance, debilitate, reflect, devotion, sharks, serodome and bruise, and summoning familiar action. Now that everything is keybound, it's time to put in some practice at the PVM hub dummies. The first special I won't worry about practicing since it's literally just getting out of the way. For cleave, I will need to practice switching to my shield using resonance and then switching back to dual wield after the hit. But not just that. Cleave deals melee damage, so if my protect from melee prayer is up, it will have the damage dealt, which will have the healing I get from the resonance. This means I need to practice turning off my prayer, switching to shield, using resonance, and then after the hit, turn the prayer back on and switch to dual wield. This is probably the biggest thing to practice. Next, I'll practice my keybinds for devotion. And while that's on cooldown, I'll use Debilitate and Reflect. But I need to remember to switch to the shield for Debilitate to extend the time. And after using both of those, I'll be using Freedom to clear the bleeds. I think the best time to use a damage boosting ultimate will be before the wolves come out. My goal will be to get 100% Adrenaline before then and use Berserk, which is a little risky when learning a new boss. But this is the safest time to use it in the fight, so I will practice triggering Berserk, drinking an Adrenaline Dose, and switching to my two-handed weapon. By the time the wolves come out, I should be ready to clear them with a Hurricane and Quake while being under Berserk. And once they're gone, I'll switch back to my dual wield and start all over. This is what I practice before going to a new boss. It really helps to break down the fight and how you want to tackle each mechanic and special. If you put in about an hour or two of just practicing the steps you're going to take for each mechanic, it'll be so much easier to fight the boss the first time. What I would do next is trying the boss on practice mode. This does use up resources like food and potions, but it'll be safe and won't send you to death's office if you die. That being said, don't wear your sign of life in practice mode. I'm skipping over the kill count for Hellweir, which is 40 kills or 20 if you have high enough reputation. So the first things that I did when entering were drinking my super melee potion and weapon poison potion, and then turning on my melee protection prayer. I got really lucky with the mushroom cloud and didn't need a move. Now I can prepare for the resonance switch. Even though I didn't need the health, it is still great practice. 
Next, I'll counter the frenzy with devotion just like I practiced and I'll be ready to use freedom once it's done to clear the bleed. And this is when I realized my first mistake. I triggered Berserk with the Ring of Vigor and drank my Adrenaline Potion. That's, that's all good. But what I wanted to do was switch to my two-handed weapon for the wolves. Unfortunately, I didn't leave room in my inventory for both weapons, so I couldn't switch. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. I was super lucky with the mushroom clouds again, but didn't get away from the cleave in time, and still had wolves out on top of missing out on my berserk. My second problem that I ran into was using a regular two-handed weapon and not a halberd style weapon. The wolves were still able to attack me, but I was still out of distance from them. And I didn't even realize this problem until my final run with Hellweir. So you'll see that I don't even change the weapon at all, but if I were to do it over again, I'd bring a crystal halberd or higher. And the third problem I ran into was drinking Ceridomen brews without bringing super restores, since I'm used to drinking overloads. I completely missed the next cleave, forcing myself to eat, but devotion was off cooldown so I'll be ready for the frenzy. But now watching the footage, I see that I went with Debilitate Reflect instead. I keep getting lucky with the Mushroom Clouds, but I think I started to realize that the weapon I brought was wrong. This time I successfully resonanced the cleave, but not sure why I took off my main hand weapon. I swear, I'm good at this game. I used Devotion for the Frenzy and Freedom after to clear the bleed. And now my luck ran out with the Mushroom Clouds. With the Wolves and Mushroom Clouds, I needed to step away and avoid the cleave since there were too many things that could snipe my resonance. I used Debilitate and tanked the rest of the damage, get lucky again with the Mushroom Clouds, and successfully resonance the next cleave, and used Devotion before the Frenzy, just like I practiced. I see that I'm getting close to the end of the kill, so I put on the Ring of Wealth, even though I won't be getting any drops in practice mode, but you still want to practice everything. I resonance the next cleave again, even with Wolves out, which isn't always guaranteed. All in all, a rough start, but successful. Still plenty of food left, so I'm going to teleport to the PVM hub, restock, make some minor changes, and try another practice. This time, I make sure there's space in my inventory for two weapons, and I bring some super restores. I'll speed up this run since it's a lot of the same stuff, but right here is a great example of the wolves sniping your resonance. And this is also right when I realized that I still had cape perks from my max cape, so I should have died there. And now I won't be bringing my sign of life to the next fight since I have it on my cape. But I still beat him. So I teleport back to the PVM hub, restock, and now it's time for a real kill. I'll also speed this one up since it's very similar to the previous fight. But this time without the oops. This still requires a lot of practice, timing to get down, and things like that. But I still get an actual kill in 4 minutes 37 seconds. And I got a Crest of Saren drop, which is worth 22 mil. I would continue to fight the boss for the next hour, slowly getting better and better. And you can get in a PVM at lower levels with a lower gear, but I'm not going to lie. It is much easier and faster having higher levels, overloads, and better gear. My record time for Hellweir is 1 minute 22 seconds, which is much faster than the 4 minute 37 second kill. That's increasing your average kills per hour from 13 to 40 kills. And you should also know by now that faster kills per hour equal more GP per hour. And that's putting it all together. This is literally a step-by-step -step process that I take to learning a new boss. And if you want to see me apply all of this to new bosses that I've never fought and completely fail, come watch me on Twitch. I've got the link down below. I've got ideas for an intermediate PVM series that'll come out in about a month or two, but I think I'm going to focus on getting my stuff back from the hacker. And if you haven't seen that series, I've got the playlist card that'll come up on screen right now. Uh, and if you want to stay updated, make sure you join the Discord server. I've also got the link for that down below. Make sure you all stay healthy, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Why did I sign? I don't get it. Ah, oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs>